Wealth may be considered as everything we own. Houses, farms, baseballs, cars, ships, clothes, food, movies, TV sets, and thousands of services that provide health and pleasure. Money is that mysterious substance that makes a modern society possible. Wealth is created through work. In the modern world, money is necessary to distribute the goods and services created by work. Without work, there are no goods and services to distribute. In other words, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Someone has to work to prepare the lunch, or there would be no lunch. The wealth of a nation is the sum of all the goods and services produced by those who are working. If some people are not working and producing, the total wealth is not as great as it could be. If a railroad needs 1,000 cars to move the freight produced in a year, then to build 10,000 cars could cause many train wrecks, slow the hauling of freight, and bankrupt the railroad. The only need for 10 times as many cars would be to haul 10 times as much freight. Money serves essentially the same purpose as any other carrier of a product. It carries credit or purchasing power from place to place or from person to person. Too much money or too little money interferes with the efficient distribution of goods and services just as too many or too few freight cars interfere with the hauling of freight. Money measures the value of products and services and usually it can be exchanged for these items of wealth. There was a time in Germany, however, when even a million marks would not buy a ham sandwich. Just before the total collapse of the mark in 1923, it took 80 billion marks to buy an egg and 200 billion to buy a loaf of bread. The German government printed larger and larger denominations of bills and coins until in August 1923, it minted a small aluminum coin stamped one half million marks. But it was worth less than an American penny. Money to be functional must be managed in the same way as freight cars for a railroad. There should be enough money to move the credit necessary to carry on the business of the nation. No more, no less. Too much money clogs the credit distribution system in much the same way as too many railroad cars would clog the rail system, or too much sand in an hourglass would destroy its ability to measure time. On the other hand, an inadequate supply of money, freight cars, or sand in the hourglass makes it difficult to move goods and services from person to person efficiently, or to keep accurate time. Because of the common belief that governments and people should not be in debt, the money supply was gradually reduced during the 1920s from 26 billion to 19 billion dollars, thus contributing to the situation which led to the Great Depression of the 1930s. In other words, money and production were kept out of balance for the decade of the 1920s. And so as a result, we had starvation in the midst of plenty in the 1930s. It was a bleak picture. Pigs were even thrown into the Mississippi River at the same time that people were starving. The slow reduction of the money supply in the 1920s kept money and production out of balance. More individual people and municipal and state governments paid off loans than made new loans. As a result, the money supply was reduced to the point where thousands of banks failed. Some say that money is a storehouse of wealth. No such thing. Money stores a claim to wealth, which can usually be exchanged for wealth at some future date. It would be more nearly accurate to say that money is a storehouse of value. Elevators and warehouses store some kinds of wealth, and freight cars and trucks are used to transport this wealth. Savings institutions store money in the form of credit or purchasing power so that the money can be used by others to buy and sell. Money may be likened to the wires in a power line. The wires move electricity from the power plant to the consumer. The wires are merely the means of sending the power to the home or business where it is needed. It would be foolish to try to save electricity for future use by taking the wires from the poles. 
Electricity may be stored as surplus water behind the dam or in batteries, but we leave the wires on the poles to distribute more electricity whenever it is needed. When money is held for long periods of time as money, its function of moving wealth is destroyed. If one wishes to save money for future spending, it should be loaned to someone else so that it can serve its primary purpose as a medium of exchange. Money maintains its value through the interest it earns. Hoarded or idle money does not earn interest.